Hey everybody, welcome back to another math lesson. Today we're going to tackle multiplying rational numbers. So we're going to title our notes, Multiplying Rational Numbers. And we've talked about rational numbers. Rational numbers are fractions, they're decimals, they're positive, they're negative. So what we're dealing with today is how do we multiply all of those types of numbers together. The first one we're going to tackle is we're going to go ahead and just jump right in with fractions first. So we're going to start with our fractions. So how do we multiply fractions? We're going to start with looking at this example. We're going to say negative 2 and 1 half times negative Five. Now something to keep in mind, there are lots of different ways to show multiplication. We can use the little x, we can use a dot, we can leave no sign at all, which this means multiply, so when it's touching the parentheses like that, when there's no sign, that means multiply. And we can also use the dot. We try not to use an x in seventh grade because the x starts to stand for a letter or a variable, and then if you have an x next to a multiply sign, that can get kind of confusing. So we stick with the dot or no sign at all. And so the first thing we do, when we multiply fractions, it never fails every year, somebody wants to find a shortcut and they want to multiply the whole number first and then the fraction and something weird. No, don't do it, it doesn't work. The first thing we need to do, thing we're going to need to do, is make sure that all fractions are improper. So we're going to make all fractions improper. Improper. And what that means is we don't have a mixed number anymore. We're going to have just a top bottom fraction. And we do that by taking the denominator, multiplying it by the whole number and then adding the numerator. So 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. So we have 5. Keep the denominator. So 5 over 2 times, we're going to pause there, whole numbers. When we divide a whole number by something, what is a number that we can divide by that does not change the value. So negative 5 divided by what equals negative 5? 1. So any whole number can be made into an improper fraction by putting it over a 1. Whole numbers, use a number sign, over 1. So I'm going to write this one as negative 5 over 1. I got rid of my parentheses. That's okay. I changed it to my little dot. Now that I have two improper fractions, I'm going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So I'm going to do numerator times numerator. So over here, that's going to be 5 times negative 5, which is negative 25. Don't forget your negative. And then I'm going to do denominator times denominator. So denominator times denominator. So 2 times 1, which is 2 so over 2. Now, before I'm finished, the absolute last thing I need to do, I have to write my answer as a proper fraction. If the question is written in fraction form, we want the answer to be written in fraction form. So 
we're going to use division to make this a mixed number. So the last thing I need to do is write it as a proper fraction. So over here, I've got negative 25. And then on the outside, I have 2. So I'm doing negative 25 divided by 2. The numerator goes inside, the denominator goes outside. So I'm going to divide this like normal. What do you get? Negative 1.75. So this goes in one time. That's 2. 5. So that's 2. That's 4. 1. Bring down a decimal zero. That's not the answer. That's not what I'm trying to do. Let's back up. Uh, 12, so one, two, and that's two, that's good. Two times two is four. So that was good and that's a one, but I don't wanna bring down a zero here. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. I wanna stop at that one. So once I stop at the one, sorry, my page turned on my notes. Once I stop at the one, that becomes my new numerator. So this, what used to be remainders when you were in fourth grade, that becomes your numerator. And the denominator from up here stays right here. So my answer is negative 12 and a half. Once it's a negative, it stays a negative. Forgot to go over that. So up here, a negative times a positive is a negative. So when we're multiplying, a negative times a positive is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. So if you've used the tic-tac-toe thing, where you have your plus signs that go in a diagonal, negative times a negative is a positive. So two negatives make a positive. One negative stays negative. And then on the last one, not just one negative stays negative. So these two are the same. Another way to help remember um, which sign goes with your answer, two times two is two. So if 2 times 2 is 4, then what is the opposite of 2 times 2? That would be negative 4. So then what's the opposite of the opposite of 2 times 2? It's positive 4. So when you think of the negative sign as the opposite, that'll help you remember when to change your signs. All right. Now let's look at decimals. All right. Decimals. When we multiply decimals, let's do negative 3.75. Nope, negative 3.5 times 0 0.7. Negative 3.5. Actually, I'm going to do times just 7. Negative 3.5 times 7. So we have a rational number, and 7 is also a rational number because just about anything is a rational number. We do not have to line up the decimals. Can you? Sure. Why not? You can. Do you have to? Absolutely not. If you do line up the decimals, it actually makes more work. So it might be easier if you don't line them up. So I'm going to negative 3.5 times 7. Now I'm going to multiply this like it says 35 times 7. So what is 35 times 7? Seven. 245. So I'm going to multiply like normal.
So you multiply it like normal. Double digits, don't forget to drop your placeholder zero at the bottom. So, in fact, let's practice that. Just because I want to know people make mistakes. So if there was a one right there, let's just pretend that this is 3.5 times 17. Let's add a one. I would put a zero placeholder and then five, three, and add those together. If I had another line, I would add two zeros. And then the next line, there would be three zeros. And then the next line, there would be four zeros. So I'm going to add these up. Okay. Now, the last thing you have to do is place your decimal. So I'm going to place the decimal. It does not go straight down. Not straight down. So this I have one decimal place. And this one I have zero decimal places. So in my answer, I need one decimal place. So I'm going to start here and I go over one. So it's 59.5. Now the last thing. Same rules as up here. A positive times a positive is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. So if this is a negative times a positive, is my answer positive or is my answer negative? Your answer is going to be negative. So this is a negative 59.5. All right, that's it. Don't forget to check your signs. Make sure you're thinking logically. If 2 times 2 is positive 4, then the opposite of 2 times 2 is a negative 4. All right. Thanks for hanging in there for one more day. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to get notifications, and something about ringing a bell. I don't know. See you all next time.